Welcome to the online training series from 3CX. My name is Nicholas, and I'll be your trainer for this module. Today, I will take you through the advanced outbound routing on 3CX. In this module, we will focus on the outbound rules of 3CX. We will see what different criteria are used and how they match an outgoing call. We will see how the outbound rules can be used to block calls from going out from certain user extensions. We will see how the system extensions can be configured in the outbound rules to make outgoing calls. We will talk about the emergency numbers and how they are configured in 3CX. Least cost routing will take up the last part of this module and we'll see how the outbound rules can be configured to take advantage of this cost saving measure. To follow this module, you will need to have covered module 1.4, which is about the SIP trunks. It is assumed that some basic knowledge of the outbound rules is also available. There are four different outbound rule criteria which are available to be configured. First is the prefix. This is what the dialed number starts with. There are no wildcards available for the outbound rule prefix. Next is the call from extension or call from extensions field and criterion, which will limit the rule to a specific extension or number of extensions. This is where the call originates from. The dialed number length can then be configured to limit the rule to a particular dialed number length. For example, this rule may only be valid for 11 digit numbers. In addition to the calls from extensions field above, you will also have the choice of extension groups. In some cases, it may be tedious to remember which extensions belong to which extension group. So you can use the extension groups as an outgoing call routing group as well. The outbound rules of 3CX are checked in a top-down fashion, always starting at the top and working its way down. When a match is made, it will stop processing rules and will not check the next rule or any other subsequent rules. If there are no criteria in the outbound rule, this rule will be ignored and the PBX will proceed onto the next available rule. Having your criteria blank does not mean that all calls will be processed. On the contrary, this rule will be redundant. The criteria fields of the outbound rules can accept single values, for example, a single extension. Comma separated values can also be added to have multiple values, for example, 100, comma, 101, to have both extensions 100 and 101 as values. You can also use the dash or minus sign to signify a range of values. For example, 100-5 will take extensions 100 to 105 inclusive. Combinations of the above are also possible. For example, 102, comma, 105, dash 117 comma 302 will take extensions 102 and 302 as well as the range of extensions from 105 to 117 inclusive in order for a call to be processed the rule will need to match the criteria the match will be the prefix and the number length and either an extension number or extension group. This can be scripted or coded in the following format as shown on the slide. In an outbound rule, once the criteria have been met, the PBX will then proceed to process the call. The rule is matched based on the dialed number. The PBX also has the capability to reformat the outgoing number before sending it to the provider. It will begin by stripping any digits required from the start of the number. When selecting the value of digits to strip, you are selecting how many numbers to take away from the beginning of the dialed number. After the stripping of the digits has been performed, 
the PBX will prepend any digits you require at the beginning. Please note that you will not be choosing how many digits to prepend, but you will choose the actual values of the digits to prepend in this particular case. The PBX will provide you with five outgoing routes. These are five different possible routings of the call. The PBX will check these in numerical order. If the first route fails for any reason, whether that be that the provider defined in this route is busy or unavailable, the call will move to the next route. A provider being busy may mean that there are no available channels on that trunk to service the call, or the provider returns an error message to the PBX. Being unavailable will mean that the PBX cannot reach the provider for any reason. A call will fail when all the set routes fail or you have defined this particular rule as a blocking rule with all routes set to block call. In addition to configuring your outbound rules to allow calls and to choose which trunk the particular call will go out from, you can also use the outbound rules to block calls to a particular destination or from specific extensions. The configuration is the same as any other outbound rule, but the five routes are now set to block the calls. Again, reminding you that ordering of the rules is very important and that once the criteria have been met, the PBX will not move on to the next rule to find a better match. Outgoing calls do not necessarily need to be from a user extension. Sometimes outgoing calls are made from the PBX system extensions. There is a feature in the voicemail system which allows outgoing calls to be made from within the PBX voicemail system. After authenticating to the voicemail system, entering the options of voicemail will give you an option to dial a number. This is disabled by default for security reasons. If enabled, the PBX will be in a position to place calls from within the voicemail menu. When making audio conference calls, the PBX is in a position to make the outgoing calls to the external participants. Sometimes when a call is being processed by the PBX, the call will need to be forwarded to an outside number. For example, when there is an exten extension exception in the forwarding rules, which forwards to an outside number, or if the destination if no answer in a call queue or ring group is set to go to an external destination. A call to an external destination does not necessarily need to pass through a queue or ring group, but may be defined in an inbound rule to forward immediately and directly to an external number. When using call queues, the queue callback feature will need to place the calls to an external location. These will all need to be configured in the outbound rules to allow calls to the external locations defined. The system extensions of the PBX are not user extensions. They do not have a phone provisioned on them and they are not part of any extension group in the PBX. Outbound calls from system extensions when you have extension criteria and or extension group criteria defined. The PBX will look for rules which do not have extension restrictions defined in order to process the call. The solution is the following. Order your rules so any extension specific rules are at the top of the list. Insert a blocking outbound rule for all user created extensions or the extension groups underneath the extension rules. Underneath this catch all blocking rule, add the rule or rules without extension or extension group restrictions. The example shown here will show will allow all user extensions to perform the calls necessary. In the blue box, there is a rule which will block any other calls from the extensions going out. Then in the orange section, the system extensions are allowed to go out with only the dialed number being the restriction available for these extensionless calls. When making a call, 
the least cost that can be incurred is zero. It is always desired when making an outgoing call that given the circumstances that the least cost will be incurred in an outgoing call. The PBX can be programmed to minimize the cost of outgoing calls. This is done using the outbound rules and seeing which trunk is the cheapest for each destination. An outgoing rule can then be created for each costing route in order to take advantage of lower rate through a particular provider. It is very important that this particular case to notice that the ordering of the rules as well as a provider order in the five outgoing routes. An example scenario would be the following. Use a PSTN gateway to process local landline calls. The local telco may provide cheaper calls to the local networks. Use a GSM gateway to make calls to local mobile numbers. You may have a few SIM cards from a local mobile provider with unlimited calls to either their own or all networks. A VoIP provider may be used for long distance and or international calls. A bridge may be used to call extensions on a remote PBX or use any resources connected to this said PBX, for example, gateways and or VoIP providers. An example of the dialed number formatting for the UK is as follows. For local calls within London, the number can start with any number from one to nine. Long distance calls from London to other parts of the UK like Oxford or Manchester will start with zero, followed by the area code of the area you wish to dial. Calling internationally from London to Madrid, Spain, for example, will have the number starting with zero, zero, followed by the country code, which in this case would be three, four. Calls over a bridge would need to have a prefix uh, to be defined in order to identify that the call is going to go to a bridge. In this particular case, calling to a remote bridged extension of 153 may require a prefix, for example, six followed by the extension number. Configuring the rule for local calls is very simple. The outbound rule name will need to be descriptive to indicate that this is for local calls. Please note that this will not affect the capability of the PBX to process calls. It is just very helpful when administering the PBX and eases troubleshooting. The prefix will need to be 1-9. The first route will then be defined as the PSTN gateway. You can also define a local number in long distance format. In case someone accidentally dials the number in its entirety or has the local number stored in a phone book in the long distance format. In this case, you would add the number prefix as 020 and route the call through to the PSTN gateway after stripping the three digits used for the London area code. Likewise, you can also add a rule for the local numbers dialed in international format. The prefix would now be 004420 and routed through the PSTN gateway after stripping away the six digits of the international country code of the UK and the area code of London. The rule to match the calls to mobile numbers would be configured with a prefix of 07. The call will then be routed through the GSM gateway, which will process the calls at a lower cost than what they will be processed through the PSTN gateway. The PSTN gateway could then be used as a backup route if the GSM gateway is busy or unavailable to process the call. For long distance calls, the outbound rule will need a prefix of zero. The routing would be via the PSTN gateway for route one and Route 2 would go through the VoIP provider. This is to provide capacity in case the PSTN gateway does not have enough channels or is not available. To make international calls, the prefix would need to be 00 and the routing would need to go through the VoIP provider.
The order in which the rules are listed is very, very important. There is a chance that the rules will need to be reordered in order for the calls to be routed correctly. For example, our intention in the following example is to have international calls routed through the VoIP provider. From the rules here, we can see that when an extension dials 00, it will be matched by the rule starting with a prefix of zero, which will route the call through the PSTN gateway and consequently through the local telco, which may have a higher rate than the VoIP provider. Therefore, our rules are ordered incorrectly. Fortunately, it is very, very easy to resolve this. All that is required is to select the rule for the international calls and press the move up button and move the rule above the local calls rule. This will result in calls starting with a prefix of 00, going through the VoIP provider instead of the PSTN gateway. Calls through the bridge to bridged extensions are also configured through the outbound rules of the PBX. You will need to have a prefix to signal the PBX to send the call through to the bridge. In this case, we will be using the prefix of six. If your remote PBX is using a three digit extension, extension numbering scheme, you will define the length of the call numbers to four. That is the prefix and the extension number. The call will be routed through the bridge connection, but in this case, you will strip the first digit, the six in this case, so only the three digit extension number is sent to the remote PBX. Calls through the bridge for remotely connected resources is also available. In the example here, we can send calls to Germany to go through the bridge to a PBX which we have in Germany and then be used to process the call with its own outbound rules. The rule prefix to match the calls to Germany would be 0049 and you can even use plus 49. You will have noticed here that I have the plus four nine in a different color. I will show you why further down. The call will then be routed through the bridge to the German office. The four digit international dial code for Germany will be stripped from the number. If you are using plus four nine, you would strip three digits only. That is the connection between the blue colored uh, rules. In order to process the number locally, the provider would need to add a zero in front of the already dialed number. So we will prepend this to the number before sending it through to the bridge. The remote bridge would then use its own outbound rules to process the call as a local call. We can also send the call through the VoIP provider as the second route, and this call will be processed without any modification to the number. Emergency numbers are the telephone numbers for the police, ambulance, or fire departments. Usually, the emergency numbers are three-digit numbers, which may overlap with our extension numbering if you are using a three-digit extension PBX. During the deployment of the PBX, you will need to identify the emergency numbers which will be used. Avoid configuring extensions with these numbers. Common emergency numbers are 112 in Europe, 911 in the United States, 999 in the United Kingdom, and 000 in Australia. Emergency numbers will then be configured from within the PBX settings. The default outbound rule will be defined as the prefix being the entire emergency number. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed this video. I do look forward to seeing you at another one of our videos. In the meantime, you can log on to our website and join our live webinars as well, where we do have live demonstrations as well. For now, thank you and goodbye.